Everybody good to go? Excellent. So we're uh, live streaming now on YouTube. So I'd like to welcome you to the April 20th, 2020 Council meeting for Allied Metcalf. And I'll call the meeting to order. And the first thing we'll do is um, ask if there's any declaration of pecuniary interest or general nature thereof. Uh, yes, Curtis, uh, I do. Uh, um, under section B, under the property standards committee, subsection one, PC, PSC dash one, two seven seven four eight Kerwood Road. That's a conflict for me. The property is owned by a family member. Okay, thank you, Councillor Clark. And during that time, since this is all new, being virtual, what we'll do is we'll ask you just to mute yourself and also um, just stop sharing your video stream, so then we don't see any um, any video from your side. Stay in the meeting, just stop the video, and then once that's done, you'll be able to hear us to say, turn everything back on. I will Sounds try. Good. I will try. <laughs> I can do that for my end as moderator. Okay. That's good. perfect. Okay. That okay. If I can't, I'll just <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Uh, moving on, if there's no any other uh, conflicts of interest, uh, we have the minutes of our previous meeting, and those are April 6, 2020 as well as our April 14th, 2020 budget meeting. Uh, mover and seconder for those. Okay, we so have Councilor Brody and Councilor McKinnon. All those in favor? Opposed? And that's carried. Okay, so we're gonna move right into the uh, Property Standards Committee. So I'd ask Councilor, or Jennifer, if you could. Oh. There we go, perfect. Um, so I we just did the that. Standards Committee. Uh, so we need to have a motion to resolve that council convene as the Property Standards Committee for the purpose of hearing property standards uh, request for 27748 Kerwood Road and that the meeting be opened at 702. So Move right. on okay, that's Councilor McKinnon and Councilor Brody. All those in favor? And that's carried. Okay, and Jennifer, you'll be taking this one. Yes, I can. Yep. Okay. Um, so there's a report there. I received an email from the property owner at 27748 Kerwood Road, and they're asking for an extension to November 1st, 2020 due to COVID-19. We can't issue any building permits at this time uh, for residential. Um, and uh, we're on hold right now with planning applications um, so they're asking for an extension till November 1st, 2020. Is there any discussion on this? No. no. So we have the recommendation in front of us to grant that extension to November 1st, 2020. We have a mover. So moved. Councillor McKinnon and Councillor Brody. All those in favor? And that's carried. And now we just need a motion to resolve that the Property Standards Committee meeting be closed at 7.04. Okay, Councilor Brody and Councilor McKinnon, all those in favor? And that's carried. And hopefully we can get Councilor Clark back on here. Perfect. All right, so we'll move into the correspondence. So our next regular meeting is scheduled uh, for Monday, May 4th, followed by Tuesday, May 19th, and then June 1st. And then we have our emergency management program committee meeting, which I believe has been changed to Thursday. Yes, that has been changed to Thursday. I just got the email today from Bettina that it was being moved to Thursday. Okay. And the reason it's being switched to Thursday is because we are having our weekly emergency updates due to COVID-19. So we're going to have that update followed by the regular spring meeting. And then on next is our recommended readings. So the first one is from OGRA and it's the heads up alert. Their 2020-2021 board of directors. Item number two is from Kathy Bunting, the clerk of Middlesex County, and it's the County Road and Bridge Assumption Approval. Councillor McKinnon, could you just mute your 
Oh, I'm here? sorry. No, that's okay. You're just moving around a couple of papers and just want to make sure. Perfect. Um, and then the next item, item number three, is from Blue Water Recycling, and it's their March 2020 notice, notes, their 2019 annual report, as well as their April 16th, 2020 minutes. Item number four is from the Solicitor General and the Ministry of Municipal Affairs and Housing. It's the March 17th, 2020 emergency declared, as well as the seasonal uh, trailer parks and recreation campground order and the planning matters in regards to COVID. And is there any questions on any of those? Or I think the, the main one that um, residents would be uh, concerned about is probably the planning uh, matters, as well as our one campground that we have in the community. Is there any comments on either of those, Jennifer or Kathy? No. no. Okay. Um, I can give more of an update once we get some more orders in. We are expecting to hear something further from the province and the county of Middlesex regarding moving forward with planning applications, but until we get that information, we're kind of at a standstill for that. Uh, the next item on recommended readings is from the St. Clair Conservation Authority, and it's an update for April 2020. Uh, item number eight, also from the Solicitor General and the Ministry of Municipal Affairs and Housing, it's the labor deployment. And then item number nine is from the Saddle Bayfield Conservation Authority, and it's their agenda for their board of directors, their GM report for April 23rd, and their February 20th meeting minutes. Is there any questions on any of the correspondence? Okay, seeing none, we need a motion to resolve that council receive and file correspondence item CC1 to CC9. Okay, Deputy Mayor Hendricks and Councillor Brody, all those in favor? And that's carried. Okay, we'll move into our staff reports and our first one is from our public works manager and he's uh, on the phone there, you can't see him. Hopefully, uh, one of the things we were talking about at County Council was hopefully one of the positive things that are going to come out of this COVID-19 situation is to finally declare that high-speed internet is an essential service in all of Ontario. So uh, that's hopefully we'll be able to get that accomplished from all of this. Uh, Public Works Manager, you have your report there. Well, thank you, Mayor Smith. I totally agree as I'm sitting down the road getting more service, so. <laughs> Um, I only have one report tonight. It's on the uh, Napier Bridge gross vehicle weight limit. Um, as reported to Council, the Napier Bridge is showing some signs of deterioration. The Township has allocated funds in the 2020 budget for remedial work on various joints to be carried out. Uh, after multiple inspections over the past year with Spreed Associates and myself, it has been determined that lowering the gross vehicle weight for crossing the Napier Bridge would help to extend the life of the bridge and lower li liability. By making the minor repairs and lowering the weight limit, it provides the municip municipality with time to address the, the complete replacement of the bridge and apply for grants and other funding opportunities. Uh, the financial impact would be uh, notice of the reduced weight limit requires circulation to area residents and affected agencies, fire department, EMS, blue water recycling, school buses, uh, and advertised in local papers. Signs notifying of the new gross vehicle weight limit would be required at and in advance of the bridge. The estimated cost would be less than $1,000. It would be covered through the operating budget. Okay, thank you. Uh, reckon oh, go ahead, go All ahead, right. Mayor Smith. <laughs> no, no, that's good. okay. Okay, uh, is there any questions at all for Coulter? Yeah, Councillor Brody? So I can, I can see the blue water and the school buses and stuff like that, but I guess if there's a real emergency, you know, a EMS, an ambulance or something, sort of, the bridge would be fine for something like that. Um, but anything else I would want restricted, I think. Is that what the thought is here? Yeah, uh, and talking with uh, Spreets, um, that's kind of the plan we're hoping to... Uh, to allow um, ambulances to cross it. Um, but as for fire trucks and whatnot, they would obviously have to go around, but that is uh, kind of the plan, Mike. Okay. So Coulter would be just 
regular everyday vehicles, meaning cars or trucks, but nothing oversized. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. And talking with, uh, Mr. Spreet, um, he's going to try and go over the, uh, the different weight limits just to, to allow an emergency vehicle like an ambulance, but yeah, for the, for your everyday traffic, just cars and, and pickup trucks. Okay, is there any other questions from members of council? No, okay, so we have a mover and seconder for the recommendation and that's to uh, receive the report and then also to direct staff to move forward with lowering the gross weight limit on bridge number 10, which is the Napier Bridge in accordance to the Spreets Associates recommendations. Yep, so moved. Okay. Councilor McKinnon and Councilor Clark, all those in favor? And that's carried. Okay, thank you, Coulter. Is there any questions at all for members of council to Coulter and the Public Works Department? Okay, seeing none. Coulter, you can uh, you can stick on the call if you want, but we can, can understand. I don't think there's any other report, so it's it's up to you. You can listen in, or you can if you find some good internet somewhere, you can watch live on YouTube. <laughs> okay, thank you, Mayor Smith. <laughs> okay, so our next staff report is from our clerk. Jennifer. Thanks, Mayor Smith. Uh, my first report here is just uh, an update. It's the fourth report that we've done since we've had our social media accounts, which is the two Facebook pages, uh, one for Township of Valley Metcalf and the other one is for Fire Department. And it's just an update. Okay, is there any questions on that at all? Seeing none, we have the recommendation there to receive the social media progress report number four as presented by the clerk. Mover and seconder, Deputy Mayor Hendricks, and seconded by Councillor Clerk. All those in favor? And that's carried. My second report um, is the monthly update for the building permit listing. Um, this is from March 1st to April 4th. And I April 4th was picked because that's the uh, date when the order come out that no more residential building permits could be issued. Um, so that reports a little bit more than a month. Um, and there will be a more detailed report for council for all of 2019 and up to April 4th, 2020. And that will come to the closed session on Wednesday due to personal information that's on that report. Okay, thank you, Jennifer. And we have the recommendation there to receive that report. Mover and seconder, Councillor Clark and Councillor Brody. Is there any questions on this one at all? All those in favor? And that's carried. Uh, my next report is regarding um, bylaw enforcement and it's for February and March. Um, I did have it for the March 16th council meeting, but because that one was canceled and then uh, COVID-19 happened, it hasn't come yet. So I brought it forth this council meeting. Um, so there's an update there as well as regarding um, the potential of bringing in a contractor um, municipal enforcement unit. Um, I know at the last meeting, which was our budget meeting, um, it was discussed with council to possibly hold off on bylaw enforcement. Um, but I just wanted to bring it to your attention that this is um, the individual that uh, staff has been looking at to contract services for. And if council wants, we can um, bring him into a council meeting now, or we can wait till we're back in the horseshoe, whichever council prefers. That's just the information ahead of time. Okay. Uh, do you have any questions from council on the report itself? And before we look at the option that Jennifer was just putting out there is for that. Councilor McKinnon. Um, through you, Mayor Curtis, to Jennifer. Uh, Southwest Middlesex, I believe, is now uh, using uh, this contractor. Have you contacted them and, and asked um, for any references in regards to this, or are you waiting until he presents and then uh, get permission to get the references? That's the order I prefer to do. I'd rather council hear from him first, and then if council has any questions, they can ask him directly, and then we can do a reference check after if council prefers. Okay, thanks, Jennifer. Yep. Is there any questions on the report itself that Jennifer has prepared? 
No. Okay, so we need a motion to re uh, resolve that council receive the bylaw enforcement staff report for the period ending March 31st, 2020, as presented by the clerk. Okay, Deputy Hendricks and Councilor McKinnon, all those in favor? And that's carried. Okay, and just is there any other questions on the report that Jennifer has provided us with um, the bylaw enforcement presentation? of that option that, that Councilor McKinnon was speaking to. Seeing none, I just wanna just make one comment. I think um, Councilor Brody was mentioning at the budget committee that we should probably delay um, figuring out who we like to have for bylaw enforcement. I think it all ultimately depends on where we are with this whole COVID situation and emergency um, as to whether we can meet in person at, at a certain point in the near future, depending on how that goes. Um, there's also the orders with what uh, staff can do out in the community. So I think I, I personally would like to see a presentation uh, done if it has to be on Zoom, that's fine. But I think we're best off to kind of keep on going down the path and have it so then they're kind of on the back burner as to when all of this emergency is lifted, then we can continue on. Uh, my only fear is that if this continues on and then we start to look at an option for bylaw enforcement, then we're going to be months down the line and we won't, we won't have anybody for a while. Is there any comments on kind of my thoughts there? Yeah, Councillor Brody and then Councillor Clark. Uh, I, I still do. I want to delay this. Like, I don't want to go and hire anybody without meeting them and talking to them and seeing how they are. Um, I, I don't feel comfortable with that at all. We haven't had one for quite a while. So what's the difference if it's a few more months? I, I, I don't, I really want to push this back. Councillor Clark. <laughs> Sorry. Um, well, not to criticize the agenda for tonight, but there wasn't a whole lot of meat on there. So we possibly could have had this individual at the meeting tonight um, and had a, um, a first dance with them, if you will. I'd like to know what the pricing model is. If it's uh, like they've given us a fee, but is that just an annualized fee irrespective of how many visits they make? Perhaps I missed that at the presentation. A and B, I'm okay with having, like seeing who they are, first of all, um, I don't think we need to delay it. If we can squeeze it in a meeting, I say put them in now. It doesn't mean we're going to hire the person. Um, and if it is decided that we move ahead, I would like to see for the first year an education piece, not so much uh, going in with both guns blazing. I'd like to be able to educate the public because we haven't had this position before. And I don't want a lot of... Um, negativity in the environment I would want this person to work with council and if the person you know we're, we're the ones that have created the bylaws so if we're not going to uphold those that's an issue but I think when it's a new position a new person I would like to see an approach of education first and of charges or offenses second but I would like a soft approach in the opening year that's all I have to say okay. uh, Council McKinnon you had your hand up yes um I, I agree with uh, both you and uh, Councillor Clark. I think we, we should proceed and uh, have the uh, presentation made by Mr. Menzies. And um, it, it's always complaint driven. So uh, I, we don't have to be heavy handed about it. So those are my thoughts. Okay, uh, Dr. Hendricks, do you have your hand up? I, I did. Um, I pretty well agree with what's been said. I think there's no harm in hearing um, what this person would expect. If it's somebody we don't want to go with, then we have to look elsewhere. So I think it's important to, um, to at least get the information um, gathering going. And uh, I agree with um, Councillor Clark on the approach we should be taking. I, I note too that it's pretty hard to enforce things anyways when our dumps aren't open so the tidy yard bylaw is really hard to uh, enforce. Okay. Uh, Councilor Brody, you had your hand up again. 
Yeah, one thing I'm not feeling comfortable with is certainly going with the first guy that comes along. So I, yeah, we can meet this guy, but I, I do not want to rush into this. Yeah, that's fine. I, I would think um, if we can have that presentation, but then I would agree we should have um, options in front of us to decide which which direction we're going. So I think we have the feeling of council that we should um, have the, a presentation in the near future to see um, this option and then go from there. Councilor Brody, you had a comment? Just a comment, but this is something that we may not even have to do. We could stay the way we are doing things. So, you know, looking after it ourselves. No one's saying that we have to go down this road either. Um, so, yeah, we can meet with this guy, but I, I, I have my uh, holdbacks, that's for sure. Just so we're clear, right now we don't we don't have anyone in our office that is has the position of bylaw enforcement. So uh, the bylaws that we have uh, approved by council has the bylaw enforcement officer. Um, they're managing these, these bylaws. They're the ones that are responsible for them. So in the, the instance that we're in right now, we don't have anyone to uphold those bylaws. Uh, Councillor Clark. Um, I just wanted to have, like you've just, um, staff is only aware of this one person because of a neighboring municipality using them. Or is there someone else? Are there other people around that do this job? And do you have to be licensed or do you have to take special courses or what's what are the um, qualifications this person has to have? Jennifer Kathy? I can speak to that, uh, Mayor Smith. Um, so municipal enforcement unit has been around for a while. They were in Lambton County. Um, they're no longer in Lambton County. Uh, Lambton County uses County of Lambton for their bylaw enforcement. Um, he is in Middlesex County. He uses a lot of the municipalities or he's in a lot of the lower tier municipalities. Um, he's also in some other municipalities in neighboring counties. Um, he would be strictly on call in only, uh, which would be complaint driven. And it would only be to the point after I send letters and we get no um, response from the letters that I've been sending out since we've been putting these bylaws in place. Um, but he can speak more to that. Uh, if you want him as a presentation, I can see what his availability is at the next council meeting, which would be May 4th. Um, I'd like that. And then council can yeah, if, go from if there. it's complaint driven and he just gets paid as a one off. You know, I, I don't know what the pricing yeah. model it said six thousand dollars in the budget, but I don't know if that's we're paying it anyway, even if there's no complaints. Um, so I'd, I'd like to hear what our op, what our options are, I guess. Yeah. Not just go with the first one. The only um, other Thank option you. we could do is put out an ad for a contract position like we do with our RFPs. I don't know what we get for a response, but it's something else that we can do as well. But they're not a licensed individual, right? They're just uh, an ad, like, like a regular person can do this? Well, he There's has no training. Sure. I'm just not certain what all training he has. I don't think he had it listed in his, he's got him and uh, one other individual. Um, I don't know if he has it in here. Because I don't like the idea of a rent-a-cop. I, I want someone that's going to educate the public and work with them. Um, I don't want somebody, like I said, going out there with both guns blazing. And um, I guess, you know, it has to be complaint-driven to some extent. So He does list the um, mm -hmm. officer training in the uh, second report that's attached there to the agenda, he talks mm -hmm. about the training that they've taken. Um, it's the various acts, you know, Police Services Act, Trespass Act. Um, but yeah, I can certainly have him come next council meeting and council can listen to what he has to say and we can go from there. Okay, thank you. 
You're welcome. Uh, Councillor McKinnon, you had a question or comment? I was just going to comment on uh, the uh, training that they've taken and um, that they can issue tickets under the Provincial Offenses uh, Act as uh, uh, a bylaw enforcement officer. So just so to, sorry, I don't know anything about this. Um, so for example, they, they could issue parking tickets if we had some bylaw that said you can't yeah. park on a certain street after a certain hour. Is it as simple as that? That's correct. That is? That's yeah. correct, Sue. Thank you. So it sounds like our first step is to invite um, this company to our next, uh, the, to the next council meeting, which is May 4th. And I think, Jennifer, we could do some more investigation to see if there's any other businesses that are out there. And also yep. um, neighboring municipalities, not all of them have a contracted service. So I know Strathair Caradoc has somebody in their office. Mm -hmm. Maybe we could do an agreement with them. So there are lots of options out there. Or we could, um, if there's somebody in our department, one of the one of our employees that's wanting to uh, add some more to their plate, maybe we could have it. So then, do you have some training to add that um, as well? Maybe that could be an option put out to staff. Yep. So, okay. Sure. Do you need a, a motion at all to invite them to the next nope. meeting? No. Nope. Okay. That's all. No. Nope. So good. Okay. Okay. So if there's nothing else for the bylaw enforcement report. The next one is from our clerk as well, and that's the pool fence bylaw. Yeah, so um, we're getting into the coming into the season uh, where swimming pools will be put up, filled, um, and we do have a, a pool fence bylaw, as you see there. Um, it's from 2001, and I just think it needs some updating, so um, the chief building official and I work together on this bylaw um, and it's just for council to review and we can bring it back to the next council meeting for a discussion. Um, I know Betty Ann sent in some comments earlier today um, and if anyone else has any comments or questions they can certainly send those to me and I can include it with a report for next council meeting and council can discuss it and approve it if they wish. Okay. And I'm sure there'll be lots of pools popping up if the uh, local public pools are not able to open up this summer. So yeah. um, is there, if there is any questions we have, please send them off to Jennifer. So we do just have a motion there to resolve that council received the pool fence bylaw re staff report as presented by the clerk and the staff be directed to bring the draft bylaw back to the next council meeting for council's consideration and approval or discussion and approval. Uh, Deputy Hendricks and Councillor McKinnon. Is there any further discussion on this one? All those in favor? And that's carried. All right, so that's everything from Jennifer. So our next staff report is from our CAO Treasurer, Kathy. Thank you, Mayor Smith. Uh, my first report is the invoice payment approval listing for the period April 3rd, 2020 to April 17, 2020 in the amount of $119,507.28. Is there any questions on the accounts? Yep, uh, Deputy Hendricks. Um, yes, the amount paid for the um, chief building official, um, what time period? was that was that a monthly payment or that would be for the month of march yes okay. is there any other questions at all i seeing none so we need a motion to resolve that council receive the invoice payment approval staff report as presented by the cio treasurer and the Council approve the account listings for the period of April 3rd to April 17th, 2020, in the amount of $119,507.28 as presented. Moved by Councilor Brody and seconded by uh, Deputy Hendricks. All those in favor? Okay, and that's carried. 
Thank you. The next report is from uh, Blue Water Recycling Association, the automated waste and recycling collection update. And it's just to give council a heads up that the pushback date for the launch is now June the 1st, subject to any other uh, constrictions or restrictions that come into play in the next uh, little while. Uh, the brochures will be sent by Blue Water Recycling. It is, uh, we are advising people that um, Brochures, if they have it that they don't get uh, ad mail or advertising, they don't receive the brochures either. So we do our best to try to get them out to people that we know do not subscribe to advertising. If anyone complains about not receiving it, it's supposed to go out the end of April. Um, if you can just let them know and we can send them one. Okay, is there any questions at all for Kathy? Okay, and just one note, um, I did send an email off to Kathy asking that, um, and this is just a technical thing, it's just re-labeling um, the Adelaide portion of the Metcalf portion and calling it North and South, um, just because you know we're 19 years into our amalgamation, but I just wanna continue on. We're one township, we're not gonna go back to calling it the Adelaide pickup day and the Metcalf pickup, pickup day. Um, so in the one that will be mailed out will say North and then the other, and then south for the pickups. Okay, if there's nothing else, we need a motion to resolve that council receive the Blue Water Recycling Association Waste and Recycling Collection Update uh, staff report as presented by the CAO Treasurer. Okay, Deputy Mayor Hendricks and Councillor Clark. There's no further discussion. All those in favor? And that's carried. Thank you, Mayor Smith. Uh, the next report is the 2020 budget update. Uh, this is based on the discussions from the April 14th, 2020 uh, meeting. There will be further updates as we receive reports that we are waiting for, uh, for the sidewalk report, uh, the fire truck tender, and the uh, office and min renovations, as well as the park plan. We're just waiting for the uh, final proposals to come through from the engineers that are working on them. Okay, thank you, Kathy. Is there any questions at all? So Kathy, when are you thinking for the approval of the 2020 budget? We should have everything in and all the reports finalized. Hopefully we'll have the fire truck tender for sure by the May 19th meeting. Uh, so hopefully shortly after that. Okay. Okay, if there's no further questions from council, we need a motion to resolve that council receive the 2020 budget update from April 14th, 2020 staff report for information purposes as presented by the CAO treasurer. Okay, Councilor McKinnon and Deputy Mayor Hendricks. All those in favor? And that's carried. My last report was a financial report, which included the February 2020 and March 2020 payroll. And that was circulated by email this afternoon. Um, we did lose our internet for a couple of hours this afternoon, uh, just shortly after four. So I sent it out once it um, popped back up. But those came by email direct to your email address. Okay. Was everyone able to see those? Okay, I'm seeing a no from Councilor McKinnon and yes from Deputy Mayor Hendricks. Councilor Clark, did you see those? Yes. Okay. And Councilor Brody, yes? Yes. Okay. I was reading lips there and Mike was doing the right thing, shaking his head up and down. So that's good. Um, so we do have a majority of council that have seen those. Um, council McKinnon, is it okay with you if we continue and approve those? Okay. So we need a motion to resolve that council receive the financial report, including the February 2020 and March 2020 payroll as presented by the CAO treasurer. Mover and seconder, Councillor Clark and Councillor Brody. All those in favor? Okay, and that's carried. Okay, so that's everything for staff reports. So we're into other business. Is there anything that council members want to bring up? Yep. Uh, Deputy Hendricks. 
Yeah, I, I was going to do a report on the Blue Water meeting, but all the information is uh, in the reports that already came out. So they were quite quick about the minutes, but uh, just some good information about why the costs are going up for recycling. Okay, is there any other questions at all? Yep, yeah, Councillor Clark. Uh, just a comment, the, um, the Business Health Centre the Community Futures Development Corp has moved to, uh, the move's complete, and they're now located in downtown Ilderton, uh, just around the corner from the Tim Hortons there. And uh, there, there's limited access, but you can call in because I know that there are new government programs for small businesses, especially those that don't meet the criteria of mainstream lenders. So if there's anybody out there that has a need and thinks that uh, the banks aren't going to help them out and they're looking for another option, I'll just recommend the Community Futures. And once again, they're in downtown Ilderton, and I believe the phone number is the same. That's it. Okay, thank you, Councillor Clark. Uh, Councillor McKinnon, do you have anything? No. And Councillor Brody? Yeah. Yeah, I was just wanting to comment a little bit. There really wasn't much on this agenda tonight. I, uh, I thought there'd be more stuff, but uh, some must have been held up because the COVID thing, I guess, or... I just thought there'd be more to this agenda, that's all. Okay. I think, well, with the, I, I know that the planning matters, which are typically our second meeting of the month, I know that's, would be this one, we aren't able to do those right now. I think we're gonna come up with a plan if this is the situation that we'll be in. And I'm not sure about which, what other staff reports you would be looking for. Well, not necessarily another staff report. I, I just thought there'd be more. It's a pretty short meeting, that's all. Okay, and then if I could, I'll just update you just in a couple items from uh, the county perspective. Um, so county council is uh, continuing on with our Zoom meetings, just like we're doing here uh, with our regular council meetings. Um, we also are doing a bi-weekly just council information update to council members. So we're not moving any business forward as it, during those meetings, it's just strictly updates from the senior staff to council so we know what's going on there. Um, the economic development um, department, so Kara Finn has, and the warden have uh, put together an economic development um, committee and uh, from county council, it's uh, the warden is co-chairing that with Kara as well as uh, myself and councilor Elliot are on there as well as um, members of the community and the different uh, work uh, force areas. Um, so Councillor Clark was mentioning about the um, business help center. So the GM from there is on that committee as well. So we're coming up with um, there's surveys that are being sent out to businesses in Middlesex County, seeing how they're doing during this uh, emergency and getting those updates and then doing those surveys. Um, there's already been one out. We've collected that data. There'll be a new survey going out in the near future so we can do some comparison see how the numbers are going and seeing how those businesses are, are holding up. Um, so that's, that's something that's positive um, during this time. Um, as well, um, I'm sure Kathy will bring, bring this up in, at a future meeting, but you may have seen a CTV news segment about 50 King and the amount of um, equipment and furniture that was left behind by the Middlesex London Health Unit. Um, there's a positive out of that is that since Middlesex County is the landlord at that location. Um, they're now in possession of all of that, uh, all the, the furniture there and the equipment. So when we are doing the renovations to our office and having more office spaces, we will be able to uh, pick up some furniture there. So that'll, that'll help out uh, when we do those renovations. So then we'll be able to get some desks and office chairs and, and whatever else we're, we're able to get from there. So that's, that's a positive thing that's recently happened during this time. Um, I think other than that, that's that's everything from my end. Um, is there anything else for other business that anybody wants to bring up? Yeah, Councilor Brody. Um, I guess just speaking about the offices, like we haven't tendered any of that out yet, correct? 
yeah. So this it's going to be delayed for sure. Yeah. Are we going to have a? Do we have any backup plan if we need more room for some things that are going to happen, or what do you think, Abby? Um, as a backup plan, there are some dividers. They're not the ideal situation, but there are dividers available from the 50 King Street um, site. So we would work with um, div divvying up offices at that way for an interim placement, just okay. to get us through until we can get the actual renovations done. But um, COVID is certainly holding us up and the lack of being able to work off site is definitely impairing our moving forward at this moment, but um, streets have confirmed that they will be out and getting it done as soon as they possibly can. They've been out and done their measuring here at the office again, so they've got everything they need for here. Uh, the park is being delayed just because of being off site and uh, needing more than a few people to be out there. Yeah, okay. They are moving forward on it. Okay, thanks, Kathy. Okay, is there anything else? Okay, seeing none, so we have our bylaws, which we just have the one. So we need a motion to resolve that all three readings be given to bylaw number 19 of 2020, the confirmed council proceedings, and that the bylaws be signed by the mayor and clerk and the corporate seal be attached. Mover and seconder for that, Council McKinnon and Council Brody. All those in favor? Opposed, and that's carried. And we just have our adjournment next, but I will make the note that we did schedule a closed session meeting for April 22nd, and that's at 6 p.m. Is that correct, Jennifer? Oh, that's it. Yes, that's okay. correct. Okay. And that's at 6 p.m. And with that, so we'll be meeting on Zoom, just like this. And um, the agenda for that meeting has been posted on the website uh, for uh, in conformity to our uh, procedural bylaw. And I think everything's good with that. Correct, Jennifer? Yes, so. I'll, um, I do have my report that I will send out to council tomorrow. Um, okay. So you'll have a chance to review it before the meeting on Wednesday and mm -hmm. whatever reports that uh, Kathy has for the rest of the items that were on that agenda. Perfect. Okay, with that, uh, that's the end of the agenda. So I do need a motion to adjourn at 7.43 p.m. Okay, Council Brody and Council McKinnon, all those in favor? Okay, and that's carried. Okay, thank you so much for everybody that's tuned in at home. And uh, we'll get Jennifer, thank you so much for uh, taking on the moderator job for uh, this Zoom call. You did an excellent job. Thank you.